Good morning students, today I'm going to introduce novel Animal Farm, chapter 5. First, I'm going to give you a summary of this chapter. As winter drew on, Molly became more troublesome. She was late for work every morning and excused herself by saying that she had overslept and she complained of mysterious pains. Also, Clover went to Molly's stall after seeing her with one of Mr. Pilkington's men, and she found some sugar and several wrappings of different colors. Three days later, Molly disappeared, then the pigeons reported that they had seen her on the other side of Wellington. None of the animals mentioned Molly again. In January, there came hard weather, Many meetings were held in the big barn, and the pigs occupied themselves with planning out the work of the coming season. It had come to be accepted that the pigs should decide all questions of the farm policy, though their decisions had to be ratified by a majority vote. This arrangement would have worked well enough if it had not been for the disputes between Snowball and Napoleon. At the meetings, Snowball often won over the majority by his brilliant speeches, but Napoleon was better at convincing support for himself in between times. He was especially successful with the sheep. They often interrupted the meeting with their plating four legs good, two legs bad, especially at crucial moments in Snowball's speeches. Snowball studied numbers of books, in the farmhouse, then he declared of building something which was called the windmill, which could be made to supply the farm with electrical power. The animals had never heard of anything of this kind before, and they were listening in astonishment while Snowball was showing them the pictures of the fantastic machines which would do their work. Only Napoleon, who had declared himself against the windmill. The whole farm was deeply divided on the subject of the windmill. Snowball didn't deny that to build it would be a difficult business, but he said that it could all be done in a year. Napoleon, on the other hand, argued that the great need uh, of the moment was to increase food production. The animals formed themselves into two factions under the slogans Vote for Snowball and the Three Day Week and Vote for Napoleon and the Full Manger. Benjamin was the one who or who uh, Benjamin was the only one who didn't decide with either faction. Apart from the disputes over uh, the windmill, there was the question of the defense of the fort. According to Napoleon, what the animals must do was to train themselves to use firearms. According to Snowball, they must send out more and more pigeons and stir up rebellion among the animals on the other farms. The animals listened first to Napoleon, then to Snowball, and could not make up their minds, which was right. At last, the day came when Snowball's plans were completed. At the meeting on the following Sunday, the question of whether or not to begin work on the windmill was to be put to the vote. When the animals had assembled in the big barn, Napoleon said that the windmill was nonsense and he advised nobody to vote for it. But when Snowball painted a picture of animal farm as it might be when labor was lifted from the animal's back, there was no doubt as to which way the vote would go. But just at this moment, Napoleon stood up. And the nine enormous dogs came into the barn. They dashed straight for Snowpole, who only sprang from his place just in time to escape their snapping jaws. In a moment, he was out of the door, and they were after him. All the animals crowded through the door to watch the chase, till Snowball slipped through a hole in the hedge, and was seen no more. At first, no one had been able to imagine where these creatures came from, but the problem was soon solved. 
They were the nine puppies whom Napoleon had taken away from their mothers and reared privately. They kept close to Napoleon. It was noticed that they wagged their tails to him in the same way as the other dogs had been used to do to Mr. Jones. Then Napoleon announced that from now on the Sunday morning meetings would come to an end. They were unnecessary and wasted time. In future, all questions of the farm would be settled by a special committee of pigs, and Napoleon would be the president. Afterwards, they would communicate their decisions to the others. The animals would still assemble on Sunday mornings to salute the flag, sing pists of England, and receive their orders for the week. And when some of the animals tried to protest, the dogs and the plating of the sheep end any chance of discussion. Later, Squeller explained to the animals that Napoleon would take extra work upon himself in order not to let the animals take wrong decisions. He also told them that the snow pole was no better than a criminal. Boxer accepted everything said by Napoleon and he adopted a new maxim. Napoleon is always right. In addition to his private motto, I will work harder. Every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, the animals assembled in the barn to receive their orders for the week. On the third Sunday after Snowpole's expulsion, the animals were surprised to hear Napoleon announce that the windmill was to be built after all. He didn't give any reason for changing his mind. But then, a squalor explained privately to the other animals that the plan for the windmill was Napoleon's and not Snowpole's. But he pretended to be against it in order to get rid of Snowpole, who was a dangerous character and a bad influence. Now let's move to your booklet. The new character here in the chapter is Minimus, a pig with a remarkable ability for composing songs and poems. Summary of this chapter in your booklet. After the battle of the cowshed, animal farm is safe from human attack for the time being, due in a large part to Snowpole's military genius. However, there remain other problems. Molly has become more troublesome, working less and becoming more concerned with thoughts of weapons and sugar. After she is confronted by Clover, Molly disappears from the farm. Later she is seen by the pigeons when she is pulling a human's cart on the other side of Wellington. She is never mentioned again. The weather also presents a problem. The winter is bitterly cold and the pigs make plans for spring planting. Napoleon and Snowpole disagree at every point. During their debates, the sheep break into chains of four legs good, two legs bad, at the most crucial moments of Snowpole's speeches. Another source of disagreement between the two pigs is the defense of the farm. Snowpole wants to stir up rebellions on the other farms by sending more pigeons to sow the seed of revolution. Napoleon wants to fortify from within securing weapons and training the farm animals. The biggest controversy stems from Snowpole's plans to build a windmill. He paints a picture of a new animal farm, powered by electricity produced by the windmill. He promises the animals heated stalls, modern machinery to make their lives easier, and a three-day work week. Napoleon is completely opposed to his plans, calling instead for increased food production on the farm. The animals are deeply divided on the subject. Only Benjamin believes that nothing will change and uh, that when the mill or not, things will continue to go badly. On the day of the vote, Napoleon called the plans for the when the mill nonsense and advised the animals to vote against it. Snowpole, on the other hand, delivers an impassioned speech, painting a picture of animal farm as it might be when the animals no longer have to work. 
just as the animals are about to vote in favor of the windmill, Napoleon makes a high-pitched sound, and nine enormous dogs rush in and chase after Snowball. They are the nine puppies taken from their mothers and secretly raised by Napoleon. The startled Snowball runs for his life and Pearly escapes through the hedge. He is seen no more. After Snowball is chased off the farm, Napoleon surrounds himself with the nine dogs who wag their tails at him the way other dogs had once done to Jones. From the raised platform where all the major ones spoke, Napoleon with a squalor and Merriman's, a big who has a gift for composing songs and poems at his side, announces that the Sunday morning meetings will come to an end, since they are an unnecessary waste of time. A special committee of pigs will make all the work plans in the future. Some of the animals try to protest, and the four porkers utter squeals of disapproval, but the growling dogs and the plating sheep end any chance of discussion. Later, a squalor explains that Napoleon's decision to take on the extra responsibilities of running the farm is to prevent the animals from making wrong decisions. He hints that a snow pole was not a hero, as they all thought, and he says that if the animals don't go along with the new orders, Jones will come back. That makes further protest useless. Boxer accepts it all without question. He adopts a new maxim, Napoleon is always right, in addition to his private motto of I will work harder. All the major's skull is mounted by the flag staff, and the animals march past it every Sunday before receiving their work orders for the week from the pigs. Three weeks later, Napoleon announces that work on the windmill will go on as planned. It will take two years. A squaller tells the confused animals that the plans for the windmill were not snow poles, but actually Napoleon's, and that Napoleon was never really opposed to the windmill. He says that the project will require harder work and reduce the rations for all of the animals, except of course the pigs. Now let's move to the questions. What idea did the snowball have to improve conditions on the farm? It was building the windmill to supply the farm with electrical power, and so the work would become less and easy to do. The animals divided into two factions. What slogans were devised in whose opinion would life go on badly as it always had? Vote for Snow Pole and the Three Day Week and vote for Napoleon and the Full Manger. In Benjamin's opinion, life would go badly as it always had. What was the dispute about the defense of the farm? Which plan seemed the best to you? According to Napoleon, the animals must train themselves to use the firearms, but Snowpole said that they must send more pigeons and stir up rebellion among the animals on the other farms. In my opinion, Snowpole's plan is the best. What changes are made after Snowpole is driven off of the farm? The democratic atmosphere disappeared. Napoleon began to be unfair. He cancelled the Sunday meeting and started to make every decision by himself. Animals were only gathered to show their loyalty to Napoleon, receiving their orders for the week. How did the squalor convince the animals that Napoleon was actually helping them? He told them that leadership is a deep and heavy responsibility, but Napoleon did so to prevent the animals from making wrong decisions. What phrase always stopped any arguments from the animals? Four legs good, two legs bad. 
What two phrases did Boxer use frequently? Napoleon is always right. I will work harder. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Goodbye.